Hey guys, so if you're watching this video, it's because you are absent or and you need to fill in your notes or you are just reviewing. So this unit is stoichiometry. Um, that's right, this S word is pronounced stoichiometry, often abbreviated as just stoich. Now, we need to know what this word is in order to know what we're supposed to be learning. So a basic definition is a study of the relationships, okay, so relationships between, so that BTWN is the abbreviation for between, uh, compounds in a balanced chemical equation. Keyword being balanced. Now, <clears throat> In a balanced chemical equation, the coefficients give the mole ratio or the molecular ratio in which the products and reactants exist. And so then we have these questions about this photosynthesis reaction. Now, just as a reminder, your reactants are on the left side of the arrow and your products are on the right. So just as a brief reminder in case you have forgotten. So when you are looking at this, is it mentioned that the coefficients, right? So your coefficients are these numbers in front. Okay, so the fact that there isn't one there means it's a one. And so here, so all of those are coefficients. Okay, so when we're reading them, they have two possible Units. They could be referring to moles or they could be talking about particles. So depending on what type of compound they are, it could be an atom. If you're referring to just an element, it could be talking about formula units. If you have um, ionic compounds or it could be molecules, if you're talking about covalent compounds, which in this case, all of these are covalent um, compounds so they would be referred to as molecules but it means that you can read out this equation that we see here um, as an a b c d and e we can read it out as a sentence um, and so if we look at a it says six molecules of carbon dioxide which corresponds to right here will react with six molecules of water to produce, that's our symbol for our arrow, blank molecules of glucose and blank molecules of oxygen. Well, if we look, our coefficient is one molecule of glucose, which is C6H12O6, and six molecules of oxygen. And so that was one unit, right? We could have been using molecules to describe all of these, okay? But for B, it reads off a little bit different. It says six moles of carbon dioxide will react with six moles of water to produce one mole of glucose and six moles of oxygen. So it's exactly the same. You're reading the same coefficients. It is just changing your unit from molecules to moles. Now for C, it says three moles of carbon dioxide will react exactly with blank moles of water. So in our equation, we know that six moles react with um, six moles of water. So that means if I have three moles of carbon dioxide, it's going to react exactly with three moles of water. And if we look at D, it says blank moles of carbon dioxide are needed to produce 10 moles of oxygen. Well, if six moles of oxygen are produced from six moles of carbon dioxide, then 10 moles of oxygen must be produced from 10 moles of carbon dioxide. So we're seeing that these coefficients are explaining the relationship between these compounds um, in that equation, right? So it's just that is what stoichiometry is at the basic level. And so E says if eight moles of glucose are produced, there will also be blank moles of oxygen formed. Well, we know if it's normally one mole of C6H12O6, um, for every six molecules of O2, well, if I have eight moles of these, one times eight gives us eight. So six times eight gives us 48 moles of oxygen formed. 
So let's now look at our mole particle diagrams. So the mole particle diagram, this is just a diagram um, or a picture that describes the equation. So um, because not all of you are going to have colors out beside you, we're going to use colors and shapes to indicate the different types of elements present. So we see that we have aluminum, hydrogen, and chlorine in our equation. So I'm going to make aluminum. So I'm going to have this red triangle be aluminum. And we're going to do an orange circle is going to be hydrogen. And a purple square is going to be chlorine. So we're just going to keep uh, a key over here for us. So if we look at this equation, we have two aluminums. So that means I need two triangles, right? And they're separated because they're not bonded together. And then we have plus, oops, that's rather large. Um, so plus, we have six HCl. Now we know that HCl is a circle and a square. And I've drawn them touching because they are bonded together when they're the same compound. Now this six means I need to repeat this structure six times. So I'm going to draw one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to draw my touching chlorines. So I have these structures. And then we're, we have our arrow. And we have two aluminum chlorides. Well, let's look at like what one aluminum chloride is. So one aluminum is a triangle. And we know that chlorine is the square. So the subscript here tells me that I have three. So that's three squares. And I have to repeat this process because the coefficient, oops, the coefficient here tells me that I have two of these. So I'm going to have another triangle that has three squares. And in theory, they should all be the same size, but I'm not very good at drawing. So, and then we have plus eight, three H2 molecules. Now we know hydrogen is the orange circles. And because it's H2, meaning there's two bonded together, it's two orange circles touching. And we draw that three times because I have a coefficient of three. And so that means our coefficients tell us how many individual molecules I have. And my subscript tells me how many different types of that atom are within one molecule. And so this diagram just gives us a pictorial um, view of what a mole particle diagram looks like and what this equation looks like, um, <clears throat> just kind of in picture format. And so We've been talking about coefficients, and we've mentioned mole ratios before, but we need to actually go into what a mole ratio is. So a mole ratio is a ratio between two chemicals in a balanced equation. Okay, now... A ratio can be a fraction or an inequality. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So if we look at A, it says what is the mole ratio between aluminum and hydrochloric acid in the above reaction? So the above reaction they're talking about is this one right here. So if we're looking at aluminum, okay, our mole ratio means we're talking about moles. So the number of moles in this reaction is 2 because that is what my coefficient is. So 2 aluminum and then the colon right there or the two dots, that makes it an inequality for hydrochloric acid. Well, HCl has a 6 as a coefficient, so 6 HCl. Okay. We could also write it as a fraction, so it could also be written, because aluminum is written first, it goes on the top, so 2 moles 
of aluminum for every six moles of HCl. So if we're to look at B, it says what is the mole ratio between aluminum and hydrogen gas in the above reaction? So again, we have alum aluminum, but now we have hydrogen gas. So aluminum is still two aluminums, and hydrogen gas has a coefficient of a three. So we have three hydrogens. And again, we could also write it as the fraction. So two moles of aluminum for every three moles of hydrogen. So this is kind of like our, the equation is like our recipe. It tells us exactly how many of each thing I need in order to produce a certain amount of product. So um, that's the basics on mole ratios and intro to stoichiometry. Next, we're gonna talk about our mole map and how we use it to solve equations.